Hey there, y'all. It's an all-saint day today here on Tim Talks Christian Rock. Time to look back over the decades of great saint music and look through my collection and see what vinyls and CDs I've got from their past albums of incredible great Christian metal. I'm sure I've got some favorites of yours among them. Stay right where you are. It's coming up. Hey there, y'all. Welcome back to another Tim Talks Christian Rock. Tim Risto here. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you're having a great day. And may God bless your day going forward from here. Last week on the show, I had on Saints Immortalizer album as my album of the week. And rightly so, because this album is just incredible. If you haven't heard it yet, if you haven't picked up your copy yet, you need to do so. If you haven't seen my review of it yet either, I'll leave a link in the description down below. You need to check that out as well. But in further celebration of that great release and to celebrate the decades of great Christian metal that Saint has given us, we're going to make this an All Saint Day today. Take a peek at my Saint collection of vinyl and CDs, get a little nostalgic, and just have fun checking out the great music they've given us over the years. Before we get to the first album, let's start with the lyric of the day. This is a new feature here on Tim Talks Christian Rock. I will read a lyric that's kind of touched me lately from one of the band's songs and albums, and you all on your own try and figure out which song and or album it is from before I get to revealing it in the video here today. So I've just got a fun feature, also a way to highlight some of the great writing from a lot of these bands, some of the great lyrical writing. All right, today's lyric of the day is this. It's a cold and stormy night, and I fear I've lost my way. The chance that I might follow you is haunting me today. It's a cold and lonely night, and I think I've lost my way. No self-control, a long-lost soul to fight another day. Which song and which album from the Saint discography is that from? We'll reveal it later in the video. Stay tuned. All right, Saints' debut album from 1984 was the very Judas Priest-like sounding Warriors of the Sun. Actually, not a full album. This was a uh, six-song EP, uh, and I don't have the original vinyl. In fact, I don't have much original, uh, at least of these early albums, original uh, vinyl at all. So this is the remastered version of from retroactive more about that in a second anyway this was a really strong debut as far as i'm concerned i love a lot of the tracks off of here it's a raw sounding album i don't think they had a very big budget for it um so you know it sounds a little tinnier a little rougher a little raw um but to me there's some really great music on here i love the judas priest sound of this album both musically and in terms of uh, josh kramer's vocals as well too which notoriously um are known to kind of have a uh, judas priest like sound to them like uh halford does from judas priest so while i don't have the original vinyl release you know i really really like this retroactive release a great deal you know even though the audio quality of the original was kind of rough this remastering on this version on this release is improves it a great deal and really helps to appreciate it better but also the packaging on this is great because the album originally came out i think with two different cover releases over time um, there's this one here uh, that was one release and then this one here on the flip side of the retroactive release um, that was also there so the neat thing about this is you get both in this release you know you don't have to collect two separate vinyls to get it you've got them both um, so i really like that and then yeah the remastering just helps uh the audio quality uh, improves upon it from the original a great deal the vinyl on this release comes in this black polyurethane sleeve and it is a black vinyl kind of a black smoke vinyl so it's real subtle a little hard to tell but there is a uh, a kind of some smoky wisps in in the vinyl um, but it's a pretty cool release nice clean simple looking label with the saint logo on it here on this album but very very cool love this vinyl release a great deal also came with this insert here which is really nice with uh, the band photos here 
band members at this time were Mike Lowry on drums, John Mahan on guitars, Josh Kramer on vocals, and Richard Lynch, of course, the legend on bass on uh, the track listing here. What's also cool about this is it comes with three additional tracks. So the original was just a six track EP. They filled it out with three live tracks, including Vickers of Fate, Plan 2, and Warriors of the Sun. So that adds to to this as well. Got the lyrics on the backside. I I love the songs on this. I mean, the first four for sure just kind of start the album out strong for me. Plan 2, Legions of the Dead, Miss and Warriors of the Sun are just great tracks. Time's Waste and the last track's pretty good too. So I, I just love this album. And this album will reappear again later because they did do a re-recorded version of it later. We'll get to that when we get to CDs. For now, I'm just going to go through all my vinyls. Then I'll go back and do all the CDs. I think it'll just be faster that way to stick to one format. So Warriors of the Sun. Great, in my opinion, strong debut for Saint. All right, next up from 1986, Saint's second album, really their first full-length album, is this classic here, Times End. I know for a fact this is on so many of y'all's favorite list um, for Saint albums. I mean, it is a classic. Look at that great cover art, number one, to begin with. Just classic heavy metal uh, cover art, Christian heavy metal color, cover art in this case. You know, Saint was, of course, they described themselves as apocalyptic metal. So they a lot of their content, uh, lyrical content, spiritual content, you know, is based around like the book of Revelation and, and themes of spiritual warfare and things like that. So it's got that very end times kind of uh, vibe to much of the much of the songs and and uh, themes of a lot of the albums so anyway this is very cool and this one on the back has the reference for this album revelation 12 1 from the bible and i stood upon the sand of the sea saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns and upon his head the name of blasphemy so there was the uh, you know the reference for why the album art is what it is but it's really very cool very symbolic and a little scary too love this album this is again i don't have an original this is the retroactive um reissue from uh, 2020 and i've got two different variants on that so i'll show you those i kept the hype sticker by the way here's the vinyl sleeve that it comes in inside the cover this is great because you got some neat photos here it's great great graphic layout here you know the band listing some some credits and uh, a nice little write-up by Richard Lynch from February 2020. So this is very cool on that side. Lyrics on the other side. And this edition here is the black vinyl release. Smudge on there. Um, here's the black vinyl release with the uh, album art reproduced on the label on one side and the uh, retroactive logo on the flip side. Retroactive also released a second color variant in 2020. Everything else was the same, of course. Covers the same. I thought I'd just show you this because this one I left the plastic on with the hype sticker on. Uh, but again, everything else is the same. But the color variant on this is this gorgeous red color tying in with the uh, colors from the album art itself, of course. And the album art there on the side A label. And again, retroactive logo on the flip side. So very cool color variant too. I really love this this color. Really nice. The album is just filled with classic songs, right? In the Night track one is a great opener, uh, all about Satan coming to you know after us in the night. Uh, track two, Island Prisoner. I was just listening to that one last night. Absolutely love that song. One of my favorites off this album. All about John on the island of Patmos, the Apostle John on the island of Patmos uh, as he was imprisoned there for preaching the gospel of Jesus. Very cool song. Really like that one. Uh, track three, Space Cruiser. You know, that's a that really, I think, began Saints' fascination for a little while with that kind of space-themed songs. They did that one here and then Star Pilot on uh, the next album. And then... Uh, was another one on in the battle anyway we'll get to those but uh like that one i love the title track times End." great track there um and th the final track on side b you know end of the album track nine steel killer it's another great great album and a great uh, great song and a great closer um this album's got a nice sound to it it's not quite 
as much. It distanced itself a little bit from the Judas Priest sound of the first album. It still has it, though, definitely, certainly in, a, in uh, Josh Kramer's vocals. Um, musically, it starts to move a little bit more away from um, the stronger Judas Priest vibes of the first album, but it's still definitely there. Anyway, so what, what are y'all's favorite songs off this album? Go ahead and comment below, because I know this is on a lot of y'all's best of list, both best of for Saint and best of probably all-time metal albums, too. Great, great album. As mentioned, I don't have any original vinyl releases of Saint. I don't have any of the original pure metal releases that came out back in the day. But I did notice on Discogs the other day when I was looking there that there is a uh, pure metal vinyl release of Time at, Time's End that was in a kind of brownish translucent color, which I thought was kind of cool and interesting. It looked cool anyway from, from the photo that was there. So do any of you have that version or variant of color variant of uh, time's end on the original pure metal release if so i'd love to hear about it is it does it look cool is it pretty cool um also anybody that has any of the pure metal releases and maybe also has the uh, uh retroactive remasters how do they compare sound wise you know what do you all think of uh the original versus these these remasters i think the remasters sound good but i don't have you know originals to compare it to so feel free to comment below on that but certainly let me know your favorite times and songs I, I love this album it is a great one all right from one saint classic album to another saint classic album 1988 saw the release of their third album second full-length album too late for a living just another incredible classic this for me edges out times and just a little bit they're both you know really close but i do like this album just a little bit better this has the notorious cover art that, I don't remember the whole story, but Richard Lynch tells it about how I think, you know, they looked for or asked for a design for cover art and got something different than what he was really expecting. But this has kind of become iconic cover art, much like Time's End has. Again, this is the retroactive vinyl release. I don't have the pure metal one. Um, so here's the back, back cover art uh, with the band members on there we'll go over the band members in just a second but great music on this album great songs title track too late for living is a classic of course star pot the second track like i said from time's end you know here was the second in a series of kind of space themed songs there was another one to come on in the battle uh what else the last track the war's over great songs i just like the combination of songs the way the music went on this album still in kind of that judas priest vibe but it starts to move more into what the saint sound really is which again has influences of priest and other bands but it really kind of got defined uh more by the band at this point you know third third album they're playing more into their sound their style and and i think a little tighter too so great great album on so many levels Again, I kept the hype sticker for this particular release. Here's the sleeve for the vinyl inside the cover. Again, great graphic layout with nice band photos there. Right up by Richard Lynch. Uh, the band members listed there and credits there. At this point, the band was Josh Kramer on vocals, Richard Lynch on bass and vocals, Dee Harrington guitars and vocals, John Mahan guitars and vocals, and John the Machine Perrine on drums. So kind of one of the fullest lineups of the band until until the current lineup i think but uh don't quote me on that lyrics on this side and this was the black vinyl release uh remastered release and again sounds really good Let's flip side with the retroactive logo and then as with times and where retroactive released a color variant of the vinyl itself they did the same with too late for living in a purple vinyl release um, again the cover art the sleeves exactly the same but uh, again, I just thought I'd show you this because I kept the plastic with the hype sticker on here. Also got a post-it note. You may be saying, what's that for? Uh, I've ordered most of or many of my Saint Vinyl through the band's website directly, through saintsite.com. And uh, at the time I ordered these, I was trying to get copies of the purple vinyl and I think the red vinyl or the black vinyl for Time's End, something like that. Anyway, I was looking for the purple vinyl. And uh, ask Richard because it wasn't on, wasn't advertised on their website. I said, "Do you have a, a purple vinyl copy yet?" He said, "Let me check." And uh, he did, and sure enough, he had one. So he sent it to me. Um, I can't remember. This might have been the one he sent me for free because I'd been ordering a lot of stuff. 
Um, anyway, he was really very cool about it. But he attached this little post-it here. It says, hey, Tim, I had to open to make sure it was purple. Thanks, Rich. So just because, you know, he hand wrote it, I kept it attached here. I thought that was just kind of cool. Here's the purple vinyl itself. I uh, really like this edition. A little partial to purple, so maybe that enhances my uh, preference for this vinyl over time's end, too. I don't know. Uh, again, really, really nice looking and nice sounding album. As with Time's End, let me know what your favorite songs are off of Too Late for a Living. Uh, these are both just classic albums. I love them both. It's hard to pick between the two. Sometimes it's just a preference of day as to which one I like a little better than the other, but I tend to always edge out Too Late for a Living. Uh, but I know many of y'all prefer Time's End. Uh, both great albums. Can't really go wrong. And if you're going to start anywhere with Saint, either one of their last uh, three albums would be great, or of course these two, great place to start if you're a new fan to Saint. All right, the next vinyl release I have from Saint in my collection is this one here, In the Battle. Actually a 2018 vinyl release, but the album itself came out in 2010, I think it was, on CD only with different cover art. But then Armor Records put this out. Armor is uh, Saint's label, basically. Uh, Richard Lynch, Lynch's label, I think. And uh, they redid the cover art for the vinyl release and the CD release they did, too, which I really appreciate. I think this cover art is actually really cool and very much in keeping with Saint's style of cover art um, from, like, Too Late for Living and Time's End. So I really, really like this. The original cover art for the CD, original CD release, was like uh, the three band members photoshopped over uh, like atomic bomb explosion. So kind of a little little cheesier look to it, and this one was much more stylistic and in keeping with Saint's cover art style of the past. Uh, there's the band members in the back. There's Richard Lynch, uh, Josh Kramer. Uh, there's also uh, Jerry Johnson on guitar and Larry London on drums. There's only three of them pictured here, though. But this album, to me, I really liked it. I can't remember if this followed the Perfect Life album, the kind of much maligned Perfect Life album, or whether that came after this. But the Perfect Life, for those who don't know, was, uh, again, only a CD release and kind of had a different sound and style to it. Took them away from their metal roots, really, and hard rock roots, and had a little more polished, different style to it. It wasn't real popular. But all in all, I think this album actually is really good and very underrated. Not quite to the heights of, say, Time's End and Too Late uh, for Living, but still, I think, a really solid, uh, solid album. And I do like this one. The title track is very catchy in the battle of that one. Star Pilot Return. There we go again with another space theme, kind of a, a sequel, you could say, to the original Star Pilot song. Um, I like that. I like uh, Acid Rain and Full Armor on the end of side two. Lots of uh, spiritual battle and battle themed songs on this album in particular, but I think it's really good. I, I enjoy this one. The uh, vinyl itself came in a paper sleeve in this very cool white vinyl edition. Very simple uh, label on it with the Saint logo on black, but uh, very, very cool vinyl release. Like I said, to me it's underrated. All right, next up of the Saint vinyl in my collection is Desperate Night. This is one of the albums that did not have a vinyl release originally. It was only on CD. This is from, uh, the album itself is from 2012 on Armor Records. Uh, this vinyl re-release here was from 2022. So Retroactive, again, was the first to release uh, a number of their albums on vinyl for the first time, and this was one of them. Um, again, love the cover art on this. Uh, really kind of stylistic um, uh, cover imagery that I love with Saint so much. This album known for being kind of a mix of vocalists. So this was really the tail end of Josh Kramer's tenure with the band. So there's a mix of vocals on here, some with Josh Kramer and some with, uh, who is to be the new vocalist, uh, Brian Phil Miller. So it's a mix of tracks um, on, on the album as a whole. But And as a result, the album kind of has a mixed feel to it, a mixed style to it a little bit vocally. Um, I think it works well enough, um, and I like a number of Kramer songs on here, and I also like Brian Phil Miller's, but the contrast is a little, perhaps a little jarring, 
with them being together. Not that they don't aren't compatible vocalist styles, and they're usually and they're on separate songs, but um, but still, just kind of hearing them on one album, it's it's a little bit of a I don't want to say mixed bag. Saint always puts out quality stuff, um, but this one obviously was kind of more of you could say a transitional album in some ways. Um, and I do like it. Um, I think we've definitely moved away from more of the Judas Priest leanings at this point, kind of in the battle did a little bit too. But uh, again, good good album. Um, just not, you know, one of the the highlights for me. Uh, I do like songs like Desperate Knife, the title title track, Desperate Night, and uh, The Crucible, the, the opening track on side A, and there's a reprise of it at the end of the album. And there's 13 tracks on here too, including that reprise. So it's a little heavier on tracks and maybe just feels a little bit, not really overstuffed, but maybe just too many tracks to uh, to really round out the album. I don't know, what do y'all think? It's, it's a little mixed for me. Uh, maybe there's some fans of the album or some bigger fans of the album than I am out there. But I, to be honest, I probably need to give it a, another listen again. It's been a little while since I've heard it. Um, this vinyl release came with the uh, insert here. You got uh, St. as Josh Kramer vocals, Jerry Johnson guitars, Richard Lynch bass and vocals, Jared Noland, of course, coming in as drums and vocals, and then Brian, Brian Phil Miller on vocals, who would return for the next album. Lyrics on this side black vinyl release in a black polyurethane sleeve. There is the vinyl itself. Again, retroactive doing the, uh, the cover art on the or a part of the cover art, or a variation of a portion of the cover art on the uh, on the label itself, with the retroactive label on the flip side. I can't really knock any Saint album. I mean, it may seem like I'm giving it faint praise or low praise, but to me, every Saint album has been really good. Again, I can't really comment on the Perfect Life because I've only heard it like once, and it's been a long time, and I don't own it. So maybe that would be the more maligned in their discography, but. Desperate Night is, is good, too. I just can't knock it. Uh, most Saint stuff is just really, really good. The next vinyl release I have from Saint in my collection is this one right here. Broad is the Gate. This 2014 album, which again was released by Retroactive in 2022 on vinyl. First time it had been released on vinyl. It's only a black vinyl release. Again, came out on uh, CD in 20. Uh, 14 uh, on a, with a different cover art and all that so it was revamped for for this uh, vinyl release and also a CD uh, re-release as well but uh, this is an album that totally features just Brian Phil Miller on vocals so while that last album was transitional between uh, Josh Kramer and Phil Miller this one uh, Brian Phil Miller this one actually is totally Brian Phil Miller so it's got a nice sound again uh, this one might be another one that's a little bit uh, not as preferred by some fans because obviously the vocalist gives you know such a certain style to the band and I feel like they were experimenting to find their next vocalist for the next era of Saint and there's nothing wrong with Brian Phil Miller I like his vocal style is just fine it probably wasn't quite as you know heavy metal sounding of a vocal style as most fans wanted and maybe even you know, maybe as much as the band wanted. I don't know the whole story about Brian Phil Miller, you know, why he was with the band for only one album, whether it was a band decision, his decision, mutual decision, don't know. But I think he's good. I, I like I like his sound, and I like the fact that this album kind of stands apart, um, even though he was a little bit on uh, the Desperate Night album, that this stands apart as a little different um, leaning to the album itself, a little different style, a different sound to it. But the album's good. I mean, I like, again, the title tracks always appeal to me. Broad as the Gate is a good one. Um, uh, Who Are You on Side B, I like that one. Metal Cross is an instrumental uh, that closes out the album, which I think is pretty cool. Um, again, a lot of a lot of um, battle-themed, spiritual battle, spiritual warfare-themed and battle-themed songs. Um, Hero, We All Stand, We Will Fight, um, all those. So good stuff. Again, another one that I probably need to listen to a little bit more just to re-familiarize myself with it. It's been a while since I've listened to it. But uh, again, a good album. And as you can see from the insert here that comes with that vinyl, retroactive release. And it's a good vinyl release, by the way. Again, good sounding, nice quality release. But as you can tell from the band photo, which actually I like this band photo quite a bit, you know, everybody here is 
is uh, is, is this is the current lineup of the band minus you know the, the vocalist. There's Brian Phil Miller, um, so the rest are all the current lineup, which is pretty pretty cool that it really started back here in 20, uh, 2012, I guess it was when the album released. But nice nice addition. Here's the lyrics there again retroactive black polyurethane sleeve and on a black vinyl release with again album art on the label retroactive label on side b or logo on side b all right the next vinyl release by saint that i have in my collection is 2020's the calf one of my all-time favorite saint albums this one really began the string of hits by this current lineup of the band that last album brought as the gate had brian phil miller on vocals um that didn't work out for whatever reason in comes dave nelson who now remains the current vocalist and has been for over the past three albums it started here with the calf this album here this is just a great album i still listen to this one a lot i love the cover art number one you know it's a lot about idols and idolatry obviously as the calf represents from the story in exodus uh, just a great album the opening track the calf it, i love that one probably one of my favorite opening songs on a saint album really well done um, another day the follow-up uh, track is really good psalm 23 the third track phenomenal rise is a great one and then you start out side two with stormy night does that ring any bells Okay, so the lyric of the day that I started the video out with is from that song, Stormy Night, from this album, The Calf. Love this album. There's so many lyrics I could have picked from this album, but I had to highlight that one. So here's the lyric sheet. I'll show you the whole vinyl in a second, but here's the lyric sheet. Here's uh, the band photo. Flip side, what is now the current lineup of Saint has been for these past three albums. But this song, Stormy Night, was written by... Richard Lynch, or at least the lyrics were by Lynch, and uh, it's really a song about dealing with, you know, temptation or struggling with things in the faith or dealing with various temptations to sin. Um, it's not necessarily super clear by the song what that might be. You know, it could be a variety of things, but um, it's really cool. So that lyric again I read was, it's a cold and stormy night and I fear I've lost my way. The chance that I might follow you is haunting me today. It's a cold and lonely night. I think I've lost my way. No self-control, a long lost soul to fight another day. But, you know, that sounds kind of maybe a little little depressing until you read the follow-up lyrics. And here's how that goes. Weakness inside of me, my path revels my history. Always convinced I'll find my way, but you are the one I need. You've shown me so convincingly a fool can't wait another day. Oh, see me falling, see me crying, see me on my knees. Help me, Jesus, please forgive me. Oh God, set me free. That's what I love. It's an uplifting album, seeking out Jesus, falling on your knees in prayer, seeking him out in times of need, in times of strife, on stormy nights when they come. Love that song, uh, musically, lyrically, it's just great. So, Song Stormy Night by Richard Lynch. Great tune. Off of a great, fantastic album. Now for the vinyl, came in this white paper sleeve, but the vinyl itself is one of my favorite colored vinyls by Saint. This gold representative of that gold idol, the golden calf. Um, really appropriate for the themes on the, on the album and, uh, and appropriate uh, just for being a really cool color too. I think this is one of the times that I can think of where the color of the vinyl is tied in very significantly to the themes of the album itself which is what makes this really cool um, I've only got this one copy and I'm really tempted to buy another copy of this on vinyl because I love this album so much and I think it's a very cool color that ties in so well symbolically uh, with the lyrics or, or directly with the lyrics very cool just a great album I can't say enough about this album um, as good as their last three albums have been uh, and Immortalizer, the newest, is great, of course, as I've said. But um, the calf still holds a special place in my heart because it's kind of it was the beginning of this quote-unquote new version of Saint, the current version of Saint. Um, these are all great albums, but uh, the calf does have a special place in my heart. I just love the way the songs come together, the way they flow, 
Uh, they all have great hooks on them for the most part, and uh, and lyrically and thematically, it's a really cool album that's still extremely relevant today. And finally, the last of the Saint Vinyl that I have in my collection is Saint Heaven Fell from 2022. Probably most of you are very well aware of this. This album got a lot of attention. Very strong album. Um, great follow-up to The Calf. Um, a little more complex, I guess you could say, musically and even uh, thematically, lyrically. Um, a little richer album. In fact, this one, while everybody else was glowing about it right from the start, it had to grow on me just a little bit because I was so enamored with the Calf album that this one uh, took a little bit of getting used to for me, although I recognized, you know, <laughs> it was a great album. But um, for me, I was so into the Calf that this one took a little bit of warming up to. Uh, not long, but a little bit. Um, it, it is a great, great album. And uh, again, cover art's just really cool, um, uniquely different from the calf, yet kind of ties in to some of the artistic style a little bit there, and yet different too. Um, great album, um, Holier Than Thou, opening track, great start off, Creature, Dance of the Gods, got a great hook to it, uh, with Dave Nelson's awesome vocals. Um, Chosen One, Fallen Armor, the Exile of Cain, Words of Wisdom, and of course the title track that actually ends the album this time. Oftentimes they start their albums with the title track, but here it ends it with Heaven Fell, kind of appropriately, appropriately with, the, uh, with the themes of this album, but strong, strong album. It's a great vinyl release as well. This is from Retroactive. Here was the insert that came with it with some of the band photos. Line up again is Dave Nelson, Matt Smith on guitars, who really should get more credit. He's incredibly good, and obviously done a lot of the writing. Jerry Johnson also on guitars, and uh, Richard Lynch on bass, the legend, and Jared Noland on drums, who uh, they're all really just integral parts of the band, of this version of Saint, which um, I didn't really realize until more recently, uh, but they're all phenomenal. Love this version of Saint. Lyrics on this side, black polyurethane sleeve with a nice black vinyl edition with a cool little kind of um, album cover art themed label there. It kind of ties into the album cover. It's not directly the album art, but uh, ties in with it rather nicely, as does side B. Very cool release as well. All right, so that does it for my vinyl collection of Saint albums. And that's pretty much what they have available on vinyl, with a few exceptions. Of course, I mentioned I don't have any of the pure metal uh, original vinyl releases. They also released the album Hellblade on vinyl, a limited, I think, Rocks Records release. I wasn't able to get a copy of that. And then they are going to have their current album, their newest album, Immortalizer, as a vinyl release, as I understand it from Richard Lynch on Facebook, but it's just not available yet. So I will get a copy of that as soon as that becomes available, and then I'll probably feature that vinyl in a uh, you know latest vinyl finds upcoming video. But basically, that's pretty much the vinyl that is available uh, in the Saint discography, and I've got most of it anyway, uh, and it's good stuff. So let's hop over. We're going to kind of go quickly through the CDs that I've got. don't want to make a three-hour video, so we'll kind of zoom through those a little bit, but let's take a look at the CDs next. All right, looking at CDs, let's go back to the beginning with Saint Warriors of the Sun. This is a retroactive CD release from 2011, a digipack or wallet fold-out, whatever you want to call this, um, and this features just the original six tracks. That the EP was originally folds out with um, the lyrics on the inside and the CD here with a red color instead of a blue that kind of ties in with the uh, some of the colorings on the album art the tray just shows some other available retroactive albums there here it's kind of interesting there's a little write-up here by Richard Lynch from 2011 he says Warriors of the Sun cost us a grand total of a thousand dollars to record um, a paltry sum in those days, but it was everything we had. After cobbling together the money to get the record pressed, we self-released it and sold it at our shows. A few months later, Murata Records, an upstart label with a bit of distribution, re-released it to a wider audience. Murata also placed full-page ads for our record, 
in several national magazines, and they kind of took off from there. So um, I know that, again, there's going to be tons of different CD releases for Saint, and um, I probably have a limited number of those, but uh, I'll show you what I got. Next up is uh, Saint Warriors of the Sun. This I'm highlighting because it's the re-recorded version of uh, that first album. Um, here it again is just kind of a fold out, redone artwork, again a retroactive release. This is billed as a 30th anniversary re-recorded edition. There's a little write up here on the back from uh, Scott Waters or by Scott Waters from No Life Till Metal. It says here the original Saint Warriors of the Sun EP was recorded in 1984 on an eight track recorder. Back then there wasn't much Christian metal around, so despite the very thin production, the album saw plenty of spin time on Christian metalhead turntables due to the fact that the songs were still good. However, once the band's follow-up albums were released, the glaring production issues of Warriors became more apparent. In 2004, Saint decided to re-record their debut EP as a sort of celebration of their 20th anniversary as a band. With a new cover uh, of the band, the new and improved recording, and the addition of two songs not previously available. Uh, so anyway, it's it's kind of neat. I'm not sure where y'all fall in terms of being favorable to this re-recording or preferring the original. Um, I like them both, um, and the new songs are kind of a nice addition, but I honestly still have a little bit of a preference for the original, warts and all, just because it is raw and it is kind of a product of its time, and the remastered uh, version of that original recording to me is just pretty cool. So I... Uh, I like them both, and I do like the cover art on this, but the original just has a certain charm because I was very familiar with it back in the day, even though I didn't own that album back then. They're both cool. They both offer something different, both in terms of, you know, the recording techniques. This one obviously is improved, um, but this one offers, you know, a product of the time and kind of a just a, a rawness to it that's, that, yeah, I don't know, I get a little preference for that one. Um, but I can't knock this one. I do love the cool cover art, which again ties into more the cover art of what later Saint albums uh, would offer and be known for, uh, spiritual warfare, battle themes, and all that. But uh, they're both cool. You know, I'd suggest uh, getting both, comparing them, and see what you think. Uh, if you have a preference for either one of these, uh, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this as well. All right, then again, I don't have originals, but I do have the Gold Disc Edition CDs of both Times End here, which I won't go through all the booklet and everything, but uh, it's pretty cool. Love the, the Saint logo and the tray there. Let's see if we can get the glare off. Um, so both Times End and Too Late for Living. I have the Gold Disc Edition of that, too. Uh, again, pretty... Pretty cool, and these do sound great. Then came 2010's In the Battle. Again, there was a original CD release of that. This is the revised or you know re redone cover art, and I think remastered, though I'm not sure. Um, and I do prefer this one over the original, so I really haven't pursued too much trying to get the original. The uh, CD printing is kind of cool. Um, it's just a little digipack wallet or whatever. Um, Pretty cool. I love this album. Again, underrated album in my opinion. Then we have Saint Live 05 from 2005. I don't remember where this was recorded at. According to the book here, it was recorded September 3rd, 2005 at the X-Fest. So there you go. Well, really one of the few official Saint recordings, uh, or the only one that's released as an album that I'm aware of. I'm sure there's some bootlegs and some unofficial releases out there, but uh, I, I kind of like this one. Um, it's not too shabby. At all, and this one I believe at the moment, as of the recording of this video, is uh, is available on uh, Gerder Music or Boons, one of the two, for like five bucks right now. So grab it while they still have copies. If you happen to see this video in time. All right, and continuing the trend we had there with the live album, moving into territory with the CDs that we didn't cover with the vinyl, we come to 2006, The Mark, which this was a concept album designed by Richard Lynch to kind of be a uh, concept telling of the book of Revelation. So again, as we mentioned, the Saint is a um, apocalyptic metal band. They've had a lot of references to Revelation, to end times, uh, spiritual battle, those type of uh, themes. And so it makes sense that they would attempt 
a, uh, you know, a concept album of Revelation. And this was the effort. What happened was Jared Nolan did a remix of it in, uh, I don't remember, a few, years, a few years later, I guess it was. And um, it was so much better and so different that Richard Lynch wanted to re-release it as this album here, The Revelation. Uh, he liked it so much, and he said it was basically a completely different album. So you've got these two albums that are basically redos of, you know, this one's a redo of it, and uh, they sound so so different in so many ways. So uh, in this particular case, you know, Warriors of the Sun, they did the re-recording. I like the original. Here in this particular case with the Revelation, I, uh, I actually like the re re uh, mixed album better i think it's stronger uh, but they're both good if you have these two versions you've listened to them what's your preference on them feel free to comment down below and continuing the trend of redoing albums or remixing them or re-recording them whatever the case may be with saint we have crime scene earth uh, 2.0 coming up in 2009 in 2008 they recorded crime scene earth um, i believe completely with richard lynch on vocals i think I think the story is, don't quote me on this, but I think the story is that, you know, this was around the time Josh Kramer was kind of in and out of the band. Um, and so Richard Lynch did the vocals on Crime Scene Earth. Uh, then they had an opportunity to get Josh Kramer back in. He redid the vocals for, did the vocals for the album. Uh, maybe he wasn't available on the first time. I don't remember what the story is. But anyway, um, did the vocals then for Crime Scene Earth, and they re-released as Crime Scene Earth 2.0. So that's the story behind behind that um i have to be honest i haven't listened to this album for a while i have heard a little bit of crime scene earth the original but i uh, don't remember a lot about it and i don't have a copy of that one unfortunately so if you've got a copy of that know what that sounds like how would you compare it to crime scene earth 2.0 which do you prefer what are some of maybe the uh strengths and weaknesses of both versions um again i haven't listened to this one for a while so i need to uh need to to check it out again, get caught up with Crime Scene Earth. Then we come to 2010 and their incredible album, Hellblade, probably one of their most popular albums. Certainly one of their strongest and one of their hardest uh, metal albums uh, in their discography. Great album. This particular retroactive CD release came out in 2021. This is just a great album. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there is a vinyl release that came out through Rocks Records. I I wasn't able to get that. I haven't been able to find it. Uh, but this album really deserves a, uh, a really nice uh, re-released vinyl release, perhaps in a colored vinyl. Would love to see that. Great album. Favorite track on here is definitely track five, Hell Train. Probably same as many of you all. But I love the opening intro bit too, The Ascent, which leads right into The Blade. And I love the uh, the closing title track, Hellblade, as well. Lots of good stuff on this album. It is It is a very very much a metal album without a doubt here's the uh, cd disc art there the logo in the tray there again i'm not going to show all the books right now but um, here is a cool photo card that came with that back side of that okay and then the remainder of these are all ones that i've shown you on vinyl already i'll just show the cds off really quick here's desperate night Again, this was originally from 2012, but then they released this in 2021 on Retroactive. Photo card there. That's a pretty cool photo. Backside of that. The CD print disc art and the backside of that. Next in 2014 came Broad is the Gate, which again, this is the re-released CD version uh, in 2021 by Retroactive. Inside with the disc printing tray with a great Saint logo and cool band photo on a little photo card here. All right, now we're up to the string of releases from the current lineup of the band. These three great, last three great albums, including The Calf, which is in this kind of digital wallet, digital pack type CD release with lyrics and uh, again, that great band photo. Uh, another great band photo there. Really love this lineup. And we have Heaven Fell from 2022. Again, nice CD release from Retroactive. They also included uh, an art card with that particular release. And as I showed in my review and here at the top of this video too, here's Immortalizer, their latest release, which is just an incredibly good album. So 
There you go. That's all the CDs. All right, that's it. Now you've seen my Saint album collection. And I guess that kind of officially concludes All Saint Day for today. Hope you enjoyed this little peek at the Saint back catalog. What Saint albums do you have? What are your favorites? What are some favorite Saint songs? I know I've asked a lot of questions throughout this video. Feel free to comment about any of those down below. I would love to hear about your love for Saint music, Saint albums and uh, the messages behind the albums, anything you feel like commenting about Saint-wise, I would love to hear. By the way, I've got to give a quick shout-out to Kent and Rex over at Area 312 Rock and Metal Vodcast because they have a phenomenal, they have a phenomenal show in general, but they also have a phenomenal interview out with the at least three of the guys, I think it is, uh, from Saint that dropped about a month or so ago. So if you haven't yet, go check that out because it is very informative. The guys with Saint are just so down to earth. Um, I really enjoy watching that. I enjoy all of Rex and Kent's uh, episodes, but, uh, but this one uh, recently here just really caught my attention and I loved it. And since it ties in with our subject today, uh, I'd highly recommend you all check it out. I'll put a link to that also in the description down below. Anyway, that's it for me today. Hope you enjoyed this little look at Saint. Have a great day. Go listen to some saint today. And above all else, stay in God's word. Blessings, y'all. Take care. Have a great one. See you next time. <laughs>